Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video of the Hardware Legends series. In today's video we are not going to talk about the mainboard, we are also not going to talk about the GPU because from my perspective there are many more products that are kind of a hardware legend than just a mainboard or a GPU. In today's video we are actually going to talk about a cooler manufacturer and special CPU coolers. You can see on my desk the Salman 9700 NT, the CNPS cooler which a lot of people should be familiar with because Salman is one of the cooler uh, designers that started 1999. I think 2000 they made their first product to the market and they're very famous for the CNPS coolers that were very famous on the market from like 2003 to 2007, somewhere in this area, especially the CNPS 7000, which is pretty much the top blower version of this. And a lot of people used it back in the days for like Adlon uh, X2 CPUs. So, we, in, we will talk in today's video about the CNPS 9700 NT, which is this one. We will put it onto the 9900K, which is in front of me on the table, and compare it to a nowadays cooler performance. I already tested the CPU with an NHD 15 and also with an Kraken AIO. So we have some uh, reference values where, you com where we compare this uh, cooling unit to a nowadays cooler and see how this one performs. A lot of you should straight recognize the Salma 9700 NT just by the design. As I said before, it's very unique, this kind of cooler design where you have those fins surrounding the cooler, uh, surrounding the fan. So that's something Salman did for many, many years. They're still doing that. So there's still some Salman coolers out there with this special design, but I don't really see them out there anymore. So I don't really see many people using them. But we will see how this performs uh, on the 9900K. If we just take a look at the cooler itself, we can see a ton of fins surrounding the cooler. The fins are actually quite thin, so, uh, thin. they're 0.2 millimeters thick, so that's quite thin and I was really afraid the first time when I got a cooler like this. Back in the days I had the CNPS 7000 and when I first touched it I was really afraid that I would kind of bend those fins and they would not bend back, but you can see you can do this and it doesn't really hurt the cooler, it still goes back to shape, so that's, that's fine. You can do that. If we compare this to the original 9700, not the NT version, the 9700 was not nickel plated. This is dark nickel plated, it looks a lot better, but the original one, the copper one, was not nickel plated, so once you had it for, I don't know, like a year or two, the copper started to get a little bit darker, started to get a little bit look like a used look the way copper looks like after several years. So it didn't look as nice, but the, the NT version, even now, this is like 10 years old, it still looks fine. The NT version is actually also kind of funny because it says NVIDIA Salman optimized for NVIDIA Enforce, which is really funny because it's Enforce is a chipset, right? Uh, back in the days we had Enforce 780, 790, 680, so that was for Socket 775. When NVIDIA was still also having chipsets, which you needed, for example, for SLI. So Salman made this like in cooperation with NVIDIA and made it kind of NVIDIA branding. Of course, it was nice from the design. It kind of looked very good on, on the NVIDIA boards because most of them were like black and greenish. So it really fitted the design, but it also doesn't really make sense. If you have a cooler and you make it like works best for Enforce, it's the same as having an NHD 15 and saying it's working best with a C370, which really doesn't make sense because you're not cooling the chipset with this block, obviously. The weight of the cooler is 760 gram, which is not really that heavy, especially looking back at the area when air cooling units were really popular, when we had all those massive like Scythe and uh, like Noctua coolers were really popular back then uh, before the AIO time. This was actually quite light, like 760 gram for uh, air cooling unit is not that heavy. If we're looking at the, the way this thing works in general, so we have three 6 millimeter heat pipes which exit from the bottom plate. The bottom plate is also copper, it's nickel plated, also dark nickel plated. And the heat pipe basically exits the cooling plate, goes around in the circle and goes back into the other side. So exits goes up, goes back into the other side. So that's why we have, even though it looks like six heat pipes, but it's three heat pipes going like in a circle. And we have a nine millimeter PWM fan in the middle, which is nice. So even to, uh, today we can use it with PWM. The only problem is if we want to use it today, we have to kind of like adjust or fix the mounting mechanism because this was only made for a 775. 
1151 obviously didn't exist back then, so we kind of have to yeah, work on the mounting mechanism. We will just completely neglect and leave away the backplate. If we use like a average mounting pressure, it's fine not to use a backplate, especially on a board like this, like the Maximus Extreme. We have this massive um, heat pipe on there, which gives the board stability. And then we also have a PCB that's quite thick. So if we're not using too much mounting pressure, it's really not a problem not using um, a backplate but we have to adjust this top mounting plate. So the mounting plate is put onto the main board usually and then fixed to the back plate. The cooler then goes onto like this in the middle and we're fixing the cooler with this additional blade in the middle. The only problem is that 775 is more narrow than 1151 so we have to remove those standoffs. The, luckily those standoffs are 10 millimeter high so I could just take some 10 millimeter acrylic plate from our stock and do some yeah, lasering work and basically cut out some 10, 10 millimeter acrylic standoffs. So we'll just use those small acrylic standoffs, cut away the original ones and replace them with the acrylic ones so we can adjust the mounting size because the 1151 is a little bit wider. Yeah, glue those back to this uh, mounting blade and I think it should work. As long as we don't use massive mounting pressure, which should not be necessary for this, we should be good to go. So first step is cutting away those standoffs, like grinding it down, glue back the acrylic standoffs and then see if we can mount this baby. As you can see, the original standoffs are removed. I also removed the sharp edges and moved those holes into like, uh, yeah, long direction holes. How are those called in English? I have no idea. Like holes that are not round, but like long. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> so basically putting those standoffs on the board, put this on top and secure it with some nuts. doesn't even look half bad. It's really stable, really solid, should give it a lot of stability, so yeah, this should fit. You can see it and you can probably also hear it, I think. For whatever reason, the fan is always spinning at 100 RPM. I didn't set it to max RPM in BIOS. It was actually lower before it entered Windows, but now it's like going berserk, always 100% fan speed, but it's also required. We can just run Cinebench R15 quickly. CPU, the 9900K, it's clocked at 4.9 and 1.3 volts. So that's some decent load there. We have 190 watt load power consumption, which is pretty much equal to the heat. So you can see one core is at 100, so it clocked down by 100 megahertz. So we're losing a bit performance, 200 megahertz. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> CPU clocked down by like 300, 400 megahertz. So we lost about 100 points. When I just did the German version of the video, it actually didn't clock far that low. So 
this is even lower than in the German version. So yeah, the cooler is pretty much on the limit here. I think if we would run this stock, if the CPU was not overclocked, if it would just draw like really only the 95 watt TDP the CPU is rated at, which it never does. If you run it on any kind of mainboard like this, it will always draw like 150. But if you would run it at stock, I think it would work. But OC is a bit on the limit here. So next step is Prime95, which is what I did as base test yesterday. 1344 minimum and maximum FFT size. So that's a higher FFT size, which equals a lower power consumption. The smaller FFT size is like 12, 16, 128, something like this, always have a much higher power consumption. But we want to simulate more like gaming performance or gaming load. If we just start this up, you can see power draw is like 150. So that's quite a bit lower. In the original test or the test I did yesterday, I performed 15 minutes like warm up run. So I kept it running for 15 minutes. And then I recorded the average temperature over 15 minutes again in hardware info. Uh, because it, it's, I think it's more um, accurate than just going for maximum temperature when we have some peaks. So we'll keep this running for now and then we will check back in a bit. I'm done with the testing and the results are actually not even that bad. It's not great, but it's also not that bad. Looking at the results, my original test with NHD15 was uh, the maximum average cores 79 degrees Celsius, while with the Kraken I had 74.25, so that's almost 5 degrees better than NHD15, but the NHD15 was only using one fan, I have to add that. And the CNPS had 84.87 degrees Celsius recorded CPU temperature average over 15 minutes prime 95. Not even bad. So 10 degrees worse than a today's AIO, five to six degrees better than one of the best air cooling units, or yeah, one of the best air cooling units. So not even that bad. Of obviously a 9900K, 4.9 overclocked, that's pretty tough, even for any other CPU cooler out there nowadays. So that's really not an easy challenge. If you would use that, let's say on a Ryzen 5, or maybe like a 9400, like an easier, uh, Coffee Lake CPU. I'm pretty sure this thing would still work properly fine today. So not even bad. Really, I'm actually quite impressed considering that this is like 10 years old or even older. I'm not really quite sure. Let me know what you think about Salman. Let me know if you had a Salman cooler in the past, which kind of cooler you had from Salman. Let me know what you think about this cooler in general. See you next time. Bye.